Hi everybody, welcome back to part 16 of the Trumpeter Bismarck build. Uh, in this episode I'll be building this, which is the uh, beginnings of the bridge. Uh, these two trumpeter parts, the main bridge structure and the deck element, just two large trumpeter parts, the rest is all photo etch. Uh, when assembled this takes us up to the lower bridge level. There are obviously other platforms to build up to give us the whole structure of the bridge. Uh, but we're going to start off this week with just this uh, lower section. So we're going to start off uh, with the large trumpeter elements. Get those stripped off of the plastic that we don't want. And we'll make a start with a photo etch. These are the bridge parts. This is Z3 in the trumpeter kit. And the platform is molded separately we're going to have to fit that uh, during this video but uh, first of all i'll need to clear the detail off the bulkheads ready for the photo etch there's some more photo etch on this one as we've seen on all these trumpeter bulkheads so that's the first job we'll clear the detail away and then we can start with some of the uh, pontos photo etch Again, I think I mentioned in the last video that, or the one before, that uh, these doors here between these, uh, they look like vents actually. Uh, they're too difficult to get to with a knife, so I'm just erring on the side of caution again and just clearing the surface detail off those door panels. rather than trying to get down to the bulkhead level. And that will enable me just to fit the replacement brass door over the top. It will be slightly raised, but I'd rather do that than risk uh, damaging the surrounding detail on that. See we've got some more of our louver vent work to do. Right, so that's done. There's quite a lot of work involved in that, not because the, of the number of uh, mouldings to replace, but uh, it's just the thickness of some of them. The vents take a lot of removing from the back here. And some of the spaces are quite awkward to get the sanding sticks and files into. Now, because this was quite a difficult uh, moulding to modify, I'm just going to prime this now just to make sure that I've got these surfaces down nice and smooth. Because working with some of these coarse files you can uh, get some nasty scratches that will show through the final paint finish which I don't want. So just a coat of primer will show if I need to do any more clean up of these uh, bulkheads. So with a coat of primer it's easier to see where the uh, worst of the scratches are and I just use a sponge sanding stick a fairly fine one just to uh, go over the primer just to get rid of 
those last bits and pieces that uh, are going to spoil the surface finish. I prefer a sponge because it doesn't actually add any more scratches into the primer. Okay, so I think that's all good. Nice and smooth. So now I want to add this, which is the upper bridge deck. And the reason I want to do it now is because I don't want to be gluing such a large part when I've got delicate photo etch on this. It's actually quite a tight fit at the back here where it goes down inside the structure. It's quite a tight springy fit. Keeps on wanting to come out. So I'm going to have to apply some pressure to that I think. Just take a little bit off the corners. Just see if I can get a better fit without having to put any extra pressure on the plastic. Okay, I think that's slightly easier. Okay, I'm going to uh, set that to one side uh, to dry. As I said, it's because it's under some pressure still. I want to give it some good drying time there. Just while I'm waiting for the uh, bridge deck to dry, I'll just fit a few more bits to the front where I can, where I've got access. This is a drilling template for some uh, ladder rungs. So they need to be drilled out with a 0.3 drill. I'll do that first. I think I can take these off now, it appears to be pretty dry. Yep, that's fine. 
this is one of those uh, large pieces of Pontos brass which I'm going to have to fit with some epoxy. It's too big to use super glue on that. So with that uh, piece of conduit, I think it is, in position, I can now fit the uh, basis to the vents. Now I've found, uh, if you've seen the last uh, couple of episodes, you'll know that I build these in sections actually on the model, rather than trying to assemble them and then glue the entire assembly onto the bulkhead. I just think it's more reliable doing it this way. So this is the backing vent if you like. This is the mesh. Now for some reason Pontos offer a duplicate for these with separate meshes. Which I don't quite understand why they do that um, but just for simplicity I'm using the one that's all joined together like you can see there. So uh, you've seen me build these vents before. We have to fold the side of the louvers up first of all, just give them a quick little flick with the tweezers. These uh, vents are a puzzle because Pontos uh, provide three of these with eight louvers on and three with nine. So because of that, there's three on each side, it's not possible to build the two assemblies separately, port and starboard. Now according to my drawings, these louvers all had nine on. But I can't think of a way of making it right, so I'm just going to have to hope that none of you notice. Just don't tell anyone.
these are the separate louvers that we've got to fit now. These are so much nicer than the trumpeter mouldings. Very uh, time consuming to put together, but personally I think they're worth it. I know it's difficult for the camera to pick these up, but I'll get a real close up shot of these vents. For the end of the video, then you'll be able to see just how nice they are. The accuracy of these parts is amazing, really. It's a credit to whoever designed them. And I know that Pontos drive us all mad, for those of us that have built the Pontos sets before with the sometimes uh, strange instructions and sometimes admittedly over fiddly constructions but if you've got the patience to do these as I said I think they're well worth it This is the last one for this side. Looks nice. Just as a measure of how much uh, I've been concentrating on that to get those louvers in, I've let my tea go cold. So that's the port side done. I'll do the starboard side off camera. Then uh, once I've done that, we'll come back and see what there is to do next. The last piece of uh, construction for this section anyway, is to fit these uh, bridge wings. These were retractable, so they came back along the bulkhead when not in use but uh, I'm going to be fitting mine in the extended position. I think the ship looks better like that. And these are quite tricky. These took quite a while to build, or at least this uh, port one. Uh, and I'll show you how I went about it. This was my method for putting them together. I haven't fitted the actual platform yet. This is just the supporting structure. Because I don't want to be fitting delicate railings at this stage until I get this uh, assembly fitted onto the ship. So I'll cut the brass parts out for the starboard side and we'll put the other one together. So the first thing we need is the platform structure. This is the main part that we've got to fold up. And then there are lots of little fillets to fit onto the inside of this and there are a couple of hinge brackets as well that go onto the bulkhead and the reason why I'm putting this together at this stage and fitting it to the bulkhead 
is that there's a lot of adjustment required to get this uh, structure in the right position. And if we tried to do that on a painted structure, I think it would make a mess of it. So I'd rather get a big assembly like this actually uh, fitted before painting. It makes a neater job of it. So here where we've got this ladder arrangement in the centre, the sides fold up around the ladder. It's easier, I think, to uh, fold the sides up to the ladder. So you isolate the delicate ladder rungs. And it helps to avoid twisting them. Now I just make a start on both sides. Just get the bend going and once that bend started the rest of it should go without any major distortion. I can do some last little adjustments with the smaller pliers just to square it all up. It actually comes down into a taper at this bottom end you can see the shape here of the front face of that taper so this folds down so we end up with a box structure like that with the two sides now this has to take quite a bit of work with fitting the fillets and using glue on this structure I don't think would be strong enough so my preferred method is to solder this side here where it joins and that'll just make sure that this whole structure is a nice strong box before we start adding any of the fillets in so I'm going to break out the soldering iron. So we'll just put a bit of flux on that joint. I'm not doing it from the inside, which would probably be the normal way to do this. But I'm not because we've got some grooves on the inside for the fillets. And soldering it would block those up. So I'm doing it from the outside. So this is my Hakko 880, which needs a good clean by the look of it, and this is a 1mm horseshoe tip. Now if you want to know how to solder, don't follow me because I'm no expert at this. There are lots of good demonstrations, particularly from the Model Railroad fraternity, who uh, do this quite a lot with their locomotives and rolling stock and so on. but it's effective enough anyway. So that join is now really strong with that solder. Just give it a quick uh, clean up. Use one of my old files for this. And then I'll just give it a quick scrub with the fiberglass pencil. Just gets rid of any bits of uh, soldering flux because if you leave any of that on the paint won't stick and what you'll find is that uh, in a few days or weeks the paint will start flaking off so make sure that's absolutely clean so uh, that's nice and strong it's a good basis for doing the rest of the work and you do a lot of handling of this part to get the fillets in so uh, glue just wouldn't hold up to that at all. 
Now I can fold down, there's a tiny little plate at the bottom that folds down, which has got a hole in it for the uh, mounting bracket, the lower mounting bracket. Okay, so I'll start fitting the fillets in now. Some of these are pretty awkward. These uh, fillets on the back face here, they're not particularly necessary really if you've got the wings extended. You can't see them, they just go up to the bulkhead. I'm going to fit them anywhere just to show you how they go in. But obviously when the wing was folded back along the bulkhead, you could see these fillets. So uh, that's presumably why Pontos supply them. So I'll just do these one by one. And for the majority of them, there are some grooves on the inside face of the uh, frame here. And these slot into those grooves. And actually, the fit is so accurate that they actually just clip in. So you don't really need any glue for that. I'll use a little extra thin CA once I've got several of these fitted in. Don't know whether you heard the click then. Once these fillets are fitted, it really does strengthen up this uh, structure. So there are fillets all the way down this ladder arrangement here. It's a bit strange that Pontos don't provide the little slots in the side for several of them. Just the first three have got slots in for some reason. So I'll just work down the ladder one by one. This bracket's got a couple of uh, eyelets on it, presumably for the rig that moved this platform backwards and forwards. Uh, so that should be provided in the set somewhere. I've not noticed it, but I'm sure it is in there. So all the brackets are in. And I've just fitted this top plate, which I'm not sure what the purpose of it is really, except that it gives us the shape of the kind of turntable at the end of the platform. You can see how that would rotate backwards and lie along the bulkhead on this back side here. So next I need to make the mounting brackets. This is the lower one. Bend the sides and the back that actually fits onto the bulkhead. And again, I'm just going to solder this to make sure it all goes together nice and tight. This bracket here has a tab which is meant to go into the slot, the open slot in the plastic bulkhead. But I found that the assembly is just in the wrong position for the trumpeter slots so I just need to take this tab off here and just glue this plate onto the bulkhead. That's all ready to go. There's one on the top as well. Just a couple of folds on that. It's easy enough. So those are the two brackets and the platform. 
Now, Pontos provide holes in the pivot at the bottom, but there's no pin. So I just use a little bit of 0.3 millimeter wire to create that pin. It only needs to be very short, but we just need something just to hook into this lower bracket. So now we'll fit this to the bridge. The upper bracket just simply glues onto the bulkhead. And the trumpeter slot at the top is covered by the plate, so we don't have to worry about that. And actually, you can't really see this bracket once the platform's in place, so it doesn't really matter too much about it. Now I'm going to glue the platform on without the bottom bracket because I'll just fit the bottom bracket to suit once I know the position of the platform itself. And I found that a little spacer, this is a piece of plastic strip, just helps to get the platform to the correct level and it also gives it a bit more strength when it's fitted to the uh, bridge. So we'll get that in position. We're just looking to get this square at the minute because we'll level it up when we put the bottom bracket in. Just use the cutting mat to square that off. Now we can put the bottom bracket on. That'll just secure the whole assembly. I've filled in the bottom trumpeter slot Okay, so that's all nice and secure. So I've just got uh, the last few very delicate parts to fit now. So the first one is a ladder that goes up the front bulkhead. And then the last thing are these, which are actually the baffles for the vents. They were there just to prevent the weather getting into the vents. And these are just a butt fit onto the bulkhead. So if you fit them any earlier than this, you're almost certain to knock them off. Okay, all done. So a coat of primer, I'm going to start to do some painting on this. Okay, that's primed up really nice. I've just been round with a sponge just to get rid of bits of dust and the one or two little spots of paint. So that's all ready for the top coats now. The first thing I'm going to do is to paint the black boot line along the bottom of the bulkhead. Then that can be masked off. You've seen this process uh, before.
Next I want to paint the uh, top of the forward part of the bridge here in a German grey. This is uh, LP27, it'll t uh, tell me a lacquer paint. The reason for painting this dark grey at this stage is it's just easier to mask off. If I'd have painted the light grey and then masked the light grey, I'd have been masking over all these uh, little ladders and rungs on the bulkheads. So you just risk pulling those off. So masking it in this sequence uh, just runs less risk of doing that. Now I'll mask off my boot line along the bottom of the bulkheads with some one millimeter tape. I think this rear bulkhead is covered up by the funnel and the aircraft hangers but I might as well mask off anyway it gives me a start to the masking process. So five minutes or so just to do that and actually this uh, black line along the bottom of all these bulkheads it's had a lot of comments from people who watch the videos thinking it adds uh, a lot to the model and I agree with that I think it's worth it. I'll mask off this top section now as well. Okay, so ready for the pale grey now. This is XF19 I'm going to be applying on this, which is uh, tell me a sky grey. Just a final check round to make sure I've not knocked any of the photo etch off, because now's the time to replace it if you have. No, it's all okay. So I'll get the XF19 in and we'll paint the uh, bulkheads. Alright, I think that's come up okay. Just one or two little spots here and there. Sponge will get rid of those. So we can take the masking off now, hopefully. We won't have any touch ups to make. I'm happy with that, it's okay. And uh, remove the boot line. There's always a bit of touch up to do with these. It's very difficult to get the mask set accurately.
I'll just go around the bulkheads, just do some tiny little touch-ups here and there. Back with the grey, and what I find is that you need to just touch up the bottom of the doors. The masking tape just doesn't quite go around those. And the last job in terms of painting is just to fill in these after decks here in the dark grey. The forward part is catered for by the photo etch sheet that I showed you earlier on. But I just need to extend that dark grey backwards onto these platforms. Okay, so I'm happy with that paintwork. The last thing is to fit this deck, which just goes on the inside of the bulkheads like that. It's a perfect fit. I'll eventually secure this with some uh, epoxy glue, but uh, I'll do that a bit later on. I don't need to do it now. And that's the assembly of the lower bridge. The uh, next section, which I'll do in the next episode, part 17 we're on, uh, is this, which takes us to the lower mast deck. Uh, and this will eventually just fit on top. All these structures, these superstructure parts, are a really nice fit in the trumpeter kit. You can see it's also got another fairly large piece of photo etch for the deck and we've got some wooden deck uh, for this element which we'll do next time. Okay so that's it uh, for 16. I've got done what I wanted to do and next time as I mentioned I'll be building this uh, next part of the structure which is the lower uh, mass deck level and I might because it's a simpler uh, structure than the one that I've done this week I might be able to do the upper mass deck level as well which is uh, a piece of superstructure a small piece uh, just to the back here so we'll see how we get on with that so that'll be uh, in part 17 coming up next friday uh, eight o'clock so i hope you can join me for that in the meantime look after yourselves everybody stay safe and i'll see you in another seven days time bye for now